And there it is. It was a little slow to start, but now the inventory levels are following the historical trend. And in a big way, oh, and sellers, get ready for an awesome upcoming market. And buyers, if you're reading in between those lines, get ready for a crappy spring market. Because the effects of lower interest rates are already being felt. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. And we're going to also talk about some, well, relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I am here to help. Rates are down and buyer demand is up. Two offer situations this weekend and both were dealing with multiple offers. The painful multiple offers, no loan inspection and appraisal gap coverage market conditions are right around the corner. Buyers, consider yourself warned. There's a little bit of a lull right now, but if and when rates continue their downward trend, it's going to be a bit of a feeding frenzy come the spring market. Why do you ask? Well, that's easy. It's because of pent up demand. You know in the movie, Taken, when the terrorist says to Liam Nielsen, good luck. Well, buyers need to watch that scene over and over and over again because that market is right around the corner. And by the way, if you're an investor, who's looking for off-market houses, then reach out, as I would really love to hear about what your buy boxes are. We get off-market opportunities each and every single day, and I'd just love to play a little game of matchmaking. Just recently, we had one in Brookline. It was a high-end fix and flip. Another one in Newton, as well as one in Brockton. I can't send you these below-market value opportunities unless I know about you. So if you're an investor, reach out. And just as a heads up, these off-market opportunities are cash or hard money only investments. No conventional financing is allowed. Now, let's get into it all and jump into the single family stats. Look at the curl, the line on the chart, that fall inventory retreat, it's here. There are 4,488 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This means that there are just 5.2% fewer houses on the market today than 28 days ago as inventory fell by 168 units from last week. We knew this would happen. And it couldn't come at a worse time as interest rates start to decrease and more buyer demand is actually entering the marketplace. As I've asked before, will the drawdown be like the 33% that we saw in 2022? Or will it be more like the 47% in 2021? It's a little too early to tell at this point. But what happens between now and ultimately in the end of the new year is the foundation for market dynamics in the spring. So if you're planning on buying a house next year, the inventory levels today are something that are very much important to pay attention to. And I've beaten the drum so many times. It's probably annoying, but it was correct. The fall market is turning out to be the best buying opportunity we had seen in all of 2023. And I guess at this point, it's just a matter of waiting to see if the fall market of 2023 will be better than the spring market of 2024. At this point, I'd nearly bet the farm on it. The downward trend has started, and you can really see that it became a lot more pronounced with the 168-unit drawdown this week. Now, what's interesting is that inventory levels grew compared to 2021. It got tighter compared to 2022, and that's because while 168-unit drawdown was a lot, it was a drawdown of 230 units in 2022. When we look at the inventory gap for 2023 versus 2022, then we now have 462 fewer homes on the market than the same time last year. The inventory levels between these two years tightened by 186 units this week as the number last week was 648 units. But when you compare this year to 2021, then the amount of more inventory on the market today actually grew to 886 units this week. That's a 62 unit increase this week. Now, to say it in a more elegant way, buyers today have 886 more houses to look at than they did in 2021 and 462 fewer than when compared to the same time in 2022. A couple weeks ago, I had said that I didn't think that we'd catch 2022 inventory levels. I was getting scared with the slow start to the fall drawdown, but this week's data gave that prediction a little comfort. There were 703 single family homes that came on the market this week. We were 26 units or 3.6% short of last year's numbers when 729 single family houses came on the market. But in the last two weeks, we've been three units short than 26 units short. For all intents and purposes, we have similar listing activity of last year in the single family market. Now, that four week rolling average is 859 units. Again, not worried about this number as a comparison because we know inventory is going to be lower as we continue through the end of the fall. Now, while new listings came in at last year's pace, like last week and the week before, the under agreement data was, well, a little weaker. We had 798 homes go under agreement, which was 10.2% less than the same week 
last year when 889 single family houses went under agreement. Now this 10%, it fell back within that 10 to 15% difference range that we've been seeing for the last two months. So while the under agreement data is weaker, it's now what we would call, well, normal. Now the four week rolling average is 828 units. So we were below that four week rolling average for under agreements as well. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were off by 3.6%. Well, under agreements were off by the 10.2%. Now, there were 827 single family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $746,000 and a median sales price of $627,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 14% because there were 961 single family homes that sold this week last year. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market with the closer that you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now this week, months of inventory fell to 1.61 months from last week's 1.64 months. The 1.61 months this week is compared to the 1.85 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. The condo market was a little slow, but they finally got the memo. This week inventory started its seasonal drop. We have 2,532 condos on the market as of Monday. Now this is a 95 unit decrease from last week. Currently there are 3.4% fewer condos on the market today than just 28 days ago. Talk about threading a needle. This year's inventory levels are just sitting right between 2022 and 2021. We now have 95 more condos on the market today than at the same time in 2021. And inventory levels when compared to 2022 are now only 49 units fewer. So a buyer today now has 95 more condos to look at than when compared to 2021 and 49 fewer than when compared to 2022. At this point, it's safe to say that from an inventory perspective, the three years, well, they're pretty similar in the condo market. Now, last week, the big question was, will that be the week that inventory in the condo market starts to pull back? That week being both this week. And it looks like the condo market answered that question with a resounding yes. Because as I mentioned a moment ago, the inventory levels are pretty similar between this year and last. Well, so are the new listings coming to the market. I mean, look at this chart. There were 287 condos that came on the market with a four week rolling average of 380 condos. Now, condo new listings were 17 units or 5.6% off of last year's numbers when 304 condos came on the market. And our under agreements came in right about where they were last week. We put 322 condos under agreement. This week, we put 321 condos under agreement. So this 321 units was 44 units or 12% shy of last year's numbers when 365 condos went under agreement. Now the four week rolling average is 319 units. So 5.6% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 12% fewer condos. There were 317 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $645,000 and a median sales price of $508,000. This same week last year, there were 408 condos that sold. So sales levels were off by about 22%. Months of inventory increased slightly to 2.22 months from last week's 2.24 months. And this compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.36 months this week last year. Any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference to the YouTube channel algorithm thing. It's just enormous for us in the channel. Well, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So I appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. It was another amazing week for interest rates, down nearly a quarter of a point. Rates in the last couple of weeks have fallen nearly three quarters of a point, thanks to lower than expected inflation data. As we've said before, the first tumble was thanks to the jobs report, but this second tumble has been thanks to the consumer price and producer price index data. If you are anything like me, then you need to know, well, the why. And for your wife's sake, hopefully, well, you're nothing like me. But why and how is that interest rates can move three quarters of a point in a matter of a couple of weeks when there are, has been no change in the federal short-term borrowing rates? And this graph right here is a good illustration as to why and how. First, take a look at the mortgage treasury spread for rates in uh, 2018, 2019, 2020. All of those non-inflation years, it was one and a half percent. Our mortgage rates are tied to the 10-year treasury. I've said this many, many, many times, and this graph really does an amazing job illustrating this. But take a look at what happened towards the end of 2022 and throughout 
all of 2023. That spread has grown to 3%. Now, the immediate question should be, why are banks charging a premium for mortgages? And the answer is tied all around inflation. A bank had to charge a higher premium over the 10-year treasury to account for the risk of future inflation. To put this into numbers, if a bank is lending out money at 7% and inflation is then at 8%, well, that 1% is a negative carry. That's a go-out-of-business equation for them. This is why they had to start building in a higher risk premium. In other words, a higher interest rate to compensate for the possibility of higher levels of inflation in the future. So with it looking like inflation may be under control, they are able to not have to charge such a high premium for their mortgage. Take this and then add in the fall of that 10-year treasury, which is also thanks to the lower than expected inflation news, and that is how you get a three-quarters of a point tumble in just a matter of a couple weeks, all without the Fed touching short-term borrowing rates. But real quick, take a look at this. Talk about some, well, economic headwinds. Inflation-battered Americans are raiding their 401ks to pay mortgages and rent. And according to Fidelity, 2.3% took hardship withdrawals in the third quarter, which is up significantly from the 1.8% rate that was observed in the same quarter of 2022. And the top two reasons given for the withdrawals, avoiding foreclosure or eviction and medical expenses. The U.S. consumer is strapped. And check this one out. Don't worry, I'm not going to go over all the sides that the U.S. consumer is, well, strapped on. But number 11 was really interesting. 80% of households are actually poorer than they were when COVID started. Number nine was interesting, too. It talked about the layoffs of Citigroup, which tied to number seven that mentioned that 20,000 jobs have been eliminated in the media sector year to date. And more layoffs, well, they're coming in all industries. But number one really hit home. U.S. renters are spending 30% of their incomes just on rent. This came after last year marked the first time that the median renter household in the U.S. paid over 30% of their income on the average price department when the national rent-to-income ratio reached a high of 30.8%. Now, I've seen article after article stating that rents are falling, but it's not true. The asking price of rent might have fallen, but there has only been one time that actual paid rent went negative year over year in the last 50 years, and that was during the Great Recession, and it was just barely. Rent of primary residence, the cost that best equates to the rent people pay, jumped another half percent in October, and rent for primary residence has gone up at least 0.4% for the last 27 consecutive months. Even with the higher interest rates, the luxury of having a fixed payment and having the financial stability that comes along with it, well, that sounds really nice. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you're looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would just love to chat with you. Just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. Also, should you know of anyone else that is thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you just passing along my information. You can visit YouTubeRealEstateAgent.com and fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, make sure you drop them in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.